In this video, we're going to continue our look into using z-scores to analyze and understand process performance data. And specifically, we'll take a look at a data set, calculate its descriptive statistics, and then calculate the z-score using a functionality in Excel. Uh, we'll also then convert that z-score into a percent in uh, versus percent out. And then we'll explore some other Excel functions that can be used to help you with analyzing z-scores. Let's take a look at some data next. All right, I've got some uh, example data. This is actually uh, performance data from an earlier case that we took a look at, um, the New Tech Wireless Call Center, uh, in which um, over two years of historical data was collected, about 730 data points that uh, kind of go down this entire spreadsheet, and the average daily hold times were calculated. So we've got our performance data. We've calculated the mean, um, and you can see right up here, just using the average function in Excel, we've calculated standard deviation and the standard deviation function up here. Notice that um, Excel has a different, uh, has two versions of the standard deviation function, standard deviation of the population data, standard deviation of sample data. Because we've got over two years of this historical performance data, I'm calling it population data. And so using, uh, stdev.p for my uh, formula uh, function. Um, and then we've got an upper specification limit here. Uh, and this was a given value. This was uh, set at 110. Uh, customers were interviewed uh, and they surveyed and we found that their uh, tolerance for hold times was, uh, the threshold was 110, um, 110 for hold times. So to calculate the z-score, we know that the formula, and I just wrote it up here for you, uh, it's going to be your point of inspection minus mu all divided by uh, sigma. We've got uh, mu, we've got standard deviation, and our point of inspection is the spec limit. Um, so one way to calculate the z-score would just be to manually crank out this formula. And in this example right up here, you can see uh, that's exactly what I did. I just uh, referenced those specific cells, D6, um, sorry, D6, D4, uh, and D5. But if you don't remember the z-score, because, you know, uh, that's a formula that not everybody's going to remember the rest of their life, probably. Uh, just remember that z-scores and standard scores are, in essence, the same thing. And so there is a standardized uh, function inside Excel. Let's take a look at that. Uh, to calculate the z-score using the standardized function, or to calculate the standard score, um, the standardized function is used. And uh, if we look closely, again, it's uh, just referencing d6, d4, and d5. Uh, I'll, I'll bring that function up. And so there you, you can see uh, how each one of the values were set in this function. So manually using Excel to calculate z-scores, using the standardized function in Excel to calculate the z-score. But at the end of the day, most people outside of process, uh, process improvement analysts aren't going to be interested in the z-score. They're going to want to know what that z-score then is uh, converted to as a percentage. And in earlier videos, we said if you know what your z-score is, you can then look it up in a table. Uh, if you're using Excel, you don't need to look it up in a table. You just use the norm dist function. And so let me show you what that looks like. Um, the norm dist function is going to ask for um, a number of parameters, a number of values. I'll bring it up so that we can see it. Um, it's going to ask you for your point of inspection, in this case, the specification limit. Uh, it's going to ask for the mean, the standard deviation, and then um, it's going to ask you if it's a cumulative distribution function or if it's a probability density function. Kind of outside the scope of this class to talk about um, uh, the differences between the two, I'm just going to say keep it at true and you'll be set. Uh, so with that information, uh, we get then our converted, how many of the data points below that specification limit are within spec.
Sometimes, though, you might run into a situation in which you've uh, captured performance data, either in current state or future state. You can easily calculate the mean and standard deviation, and uh, you've determined that the percent that are satisfied from this type of process performance is a particular value. Uh, and so in this example, I said, what if the percent satisfied was 77.1%? Uh, and I, where did I get that number? I just, I pulled it out of a hat. But um, yeah, with this example, if we had 77% of our customers satisfied with a mean of uh, close to 100, standard deviation of 24, what would the specification limit be? And so here's how you would um, calculate that. We'll, um, we'll use the norm inverse function. Uh, let me pull it up for you so that you can see what it is utilizing. Um, in this case, uh, you take uh, your probability uh, or what is the percent that you know is good. Uh, we had 77.1. Uh, what is your mean? What is your standard distribution? And if you're working with normally distributed data, um, the result will tell you what the specification limit needs to be set to. So let's take a look at that. And if we had 77% and we were operating with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 24, we would know that the spec would need to be set to 100 and just over 117, 117.6. So now you've got a variety of ways to use Excel to first calculate z-scores and then convert z-scores to percentages. Um, what I frequently do, though, is I just use a statistical package to draw visually uh, a histogram of the performance data and have all of those descriptive statistics show up on the graph. Uh, and I'm going to be using QI macros now to do that. And here's what I do. I'd highlight the data in Excel. Uh, I'm now going Control Shift Down Arrow to highlight all those values. I'm going up to QI macros, choosing histogram with uh, CP, CPK. Uh, it's now asking me uh, if there are subgroups and the its subgroup size for this data is one, uh, what the upper spec limit is, and for our new tech wireless case, the spec limit was 110. And if there was a lower specification limit and there was none, so I'm going to click cancel. And it's now asking me for the number of bars in the histogram. I'll just use the default value that it comes up with. And then I get a histogram, shows me uh, my specification limit. I can eyeball the percent that are in uh, the good area. Uh, I get my mean, median, and mode descriptive statistics. Let me zoom in so that you can see this a little bit better. I get my mean, median, and mode descriptive statistics, um, but I also uh, um, get my z-score. I get uh, percent in, percent out. Well, in this case, it's saying percent effective or percent out. Um, so I'm converting that z-score to a percentage. And it's all just uh, described right in there. Um, so in summary, uh, if you've got performance data, you can use Excel and the functions of standardized, norm dist, and norm inverse to calculate z-scores, percent in, and also what your specs would be if you already knew what the percentage in was. Or you can use a statistical analysis package like QI macros to visually create a histogram and then have all of those descriptive statistics created for you. Excel is a powerful tool that we use frequently for data analysis, and uh, now you've got some uh, techniques for analyzing this process data.